Structural engineering is one of the most impactful careers that you can do. You can infect the built environment, build bridges, buildings, and get to combine both problem solving, engineering and physics into one degree. What else could you ask for? There's many reasons why you shouldn't become a structural engineer. Some of them probably apply to even the people that do structural engineering and love it. There's a major educational hurdle before you even start. So you've just graduated from high school and you're starting out at university. Do you know one quarter to one third of the university students only pass through an engineering degree? So you may start with a big cohort, but it's really small by the end. That's because of how intense it is to get there. Too often that you see the engineers or even the structural engineers back late finishing a assignments when everyone else is off partying. So sometimes it can be quite intense. It's no small feat to pass that degree. You have to know the mathematics behind what you're doing. So it's not just simple maths, but sometimes it gets really complex. So for example, you might see a simply supported beam in the lecture. Maybe you need to design a beam structure in the tutorial, and then it's designing a whole building for the exam question. So it really ramps up and it can put a lot of people off. So it's a lot of big financial time sink and effort to get to that final degree. A lot of time as well with an engineering degree, it's more than just that base degree. So you either have to sit a master's or an honors degree, even a postgraduate degree, to better let you work in the workforce because of the complexity and the responsibility that you have. So after you've passed your degree, it's only really the starting point of your learning career. You need to keep learning all the way through, needing to keep up to date with the latest knowledge, but even getting to understand how to design buildings. See at university, they've only really taught you how to think not necessarily how to design the structures safely. So there's a lot of continuous learning even after you finish your degree to make sure you have the knowledge that you need to. Even when you're getting 10, 20 years out, you still need to keep up with the latest trends as stuff changes over time. If you have a look back in the day, we didn't even design for earthquakes, but now it's one of the most critical things that you need to do is the increased complexity keeps getting greater and greater over time. So it means that you need to make sure that you're ready to keep learning structural engineering even well and truly after you finish your degree. Too often I've heard from undergraduates who complained about the continual professional development. They're saying, well, why do I need to do it? I don't get paid that much. But then when you bring up people like doctors and lawyers, they're going, well, they get paid a lot more. So that's why they need to do the professional development. The responsibility that we hold is typically higher than a lot of these other professions, despite what we get paid. So this brings us into point three, which is potentially the high responsibility and liability that you potentially can have as a structural engineer. You have the ability to affect anyone wherever they are. So you design the buildings that they live in, you design the buildings that they work in and potentially work on the infrastructure that they use to get there. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, you potentially have the ability to affect many lives all at once. So if you design or cut corners, or potentially have people push you in the wrong direction, you can have consequences that can far outweigh just that one decision. Too often do you try and get pushed by builders and clients who are saying, this is way too expensive, you're over-engineering things. You need to push back on that information and say, well, this is my understanding and this is why we're doing it in a certain way. And even getting builders saying, I've done this for 30 years, I've never done it like this. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what pressure they're putting on. You're the person that's taking responsibility, not them. One of the best stories I think I've heard is about the bridge that collapsed in Canada, where they get a ring that's associated with the damage that you can potentially have as a structural engineer. And that ring was potentially forged from metal from a bridge that collapsed. And every time it knocks on this table, it's to remind them of the responsibility they hold as a structural engineer, making sure they're keeping their comps up to date and not cutting any corners. Even if you start your own business, you have to keep up with liability similar to doctors for many years after closing that practice is you need to have the insurance in case something goes wrong. But for a lot of people, this pressure is only really the start. When you get into the workforce, <laughs> I don't think anyone works nine to five. This brings us into point four, which is the work environment. You don't quite often do that nine to five. Too often you have deadlines, you have to respond to clients' emails, you have to get those answers out. Yes, you can cut corners and just guess the answers, but that's not what you typically do as a structural engineer, as you have the responsibility weighing on you. So too often you're spending late nights to get those deadlines out. Yes, there's a little bit of push and pull, sometimes you can leave early, but too often you're working at least one, two, three, five, six, seven hours overtime a week, if not more. Too often I've been back in the office after midnight to get projects out. And what happens sometimes, the architect comes in with last minute changes and doesn't expect to move that deadline. They don't realize the potential, the changes that you need to do and the reassessment that was required to get you that correct answer. The client doesn't really care. The architect just wants to push and get the answers out. And they typically expect you to finish it on time. So you've got to make sure that you're in it and realizing that sometimes work-life balance, pff, it's out the window. But how about compensation? Surely if you've got this long hours, stressful environment, you get paid well? Well, let's find out. Quite often you see lawyers, doctors, and other people getting paid a lot more than you. Too often it's because we're too far away from the money. So we get paid significantly less than what we used to. 
And it just seems to be getting worse and worse as we go on. And just be happy that things get passed on and moved on the correct directions. However, we should be speaking up a little bit more because of the pay reductions that we're seeing. See, projects used to get a couple of percent of that construction cost. That's no longer the case. You're lucky to get 0.25% of a construction cost. So there's a significant reduction in fees, which means that your compensation would also be significantly reduced. There's a lot of benefits to being a structural engineer, but pay is typically not one of them. But did you know as a structural engineer as well that you need to go out onto site? You need to be around the machinery similar to what construction workers are. You need to inspect certain elements and make sure it's built up to scratch. You need to go around inspecting every single piece. And quite often when you're on site, you're typically the least paid there. So you're not really compensated for the additional risk and hazards that you potentially need to see. Sometimes you need to put on safety harnesses because you're working at height, or even climb ladders or walk around certain areas to make sure that you're inspecting things in the correct way. And don't get me started about forensic engineering. Sometimes you need to go into places that you need to be careful on. Yes, there is safety protocols in place, but nothing can be foolproof. So if you're a little bit scared of heights, working around heavy machinery, it's definitely not the career for you. Engineering, despite what I think, is a pretty competitive field. To win some of those best projects, there's only so many of them out there. So too often, you're fighting competing for projects that you may not even win. Sometimes you need to put in fees and even put in some design work without even getting compensated for what you're doing. So a lot of time you're thinking that you're gonna be working on this big highway stuff, but there's a lot of competition out there. So you either need to make sure you're on your game to make sure you're winning it and being the best engineer that you can be, which means a lot of long hours and a lot of effort and building the client relationships, or potentially you could be stuck just designing a couple of lintels. Now, who really wants to be there? Doing that, competition may be fierce, which some people thrive on. But if you just like sitting back, it's not the right place for you. Do you like problem solving? Do you really like problem solving? Really, truly, truly like problem solving? Because it's something you need to do day in, day out. However, you get pushed around. People want different answers. People want different results. They potentially put restrictions on you that makes your designs even harder to do. See, not only do you need to be good at problem solving in those mathematics and working out structural mechanics, but also about what they're trying to achieve about built environments and the answers that they want to go to. Too often you're in meetings having those discussions so you need to be quick thinking on top of your game and also answering those questions as soon as they come out. You may have enjoyed problem solving, but do you really like it when it keeps getting thrown back at you because they want a different answer? They want answers in different ways? Not everything is always solvable, so sometimes you need to solve the problem by understanding what their issue is instead of the problem they think you're trying to solve. As you can see, structural engineering is not for everyone. Did any of them stand out to you? Or did I miss any? Please comment below. And if you got all the way through to the end, I've got a link to a video here about the 10 things that you can do to succeed as a structural engineer. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. So without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. Keep learning, and I hope to see you next time.